myself Shweta Shah. I am your instructor for the subject Computer Organization and Architecture. In this subject, we, are, we have started Unit 4 that is Microprogram Control. And in this unit, we are going to see today the topic that is Address Sequencing. So let me start with the topic. The micro instructions are stored in the control memory in a group with each group specifying a routine or you can say a instruction. Uh, to appreciate the address sequencing in the micro program control unit, let us specify the steps that control must undergo during the execution of the single computer instructions. Step 1 that is an initial address is loaded into control address register when the power is turned on in the computer. The address is usually the address of the first micro instruction that activates the instruction fetch routine. The fetch routine may be sequenced by incrementing the control address register through the rest of the micro instruction. At the end of the fetch routine, the instruction is in the instruction register of the computer. Second step, we require the control memory next must go through the routine that determines the effective address of the operand. And the machine instruction may have bits that specify the various addressing mode such as indirect addressing, index register, etc. The effective address computation routine in the control memory can be reached through a branch micro instruction which is uh, conditioned on the status of the more bits in the instruction. When the effective address computation routine is completed, the address of the operand is available in the memory address register. Next, we require in a step 3 that uh, to generate the micro operation that executes the instruction fetch from the memory. This micro operation step to be uh, generated in the processor register depends on the operation code part of the instruction. Each instruction has its own micro program routine stored in, in the given location in the control memory. So, the transformation from the instruction code bits to the address in the control memory where the routine is located is referred as the mapping process. So, in step 3, we will do this mapping process. The mapping procedure is a rule that transforms the instruction code into control memory address. Okay. So, in third step, we will do the mapping process. Next, in a fourth step, we will require, once the required routine is reached, the micro instruction that execute the instruction may be sequenced by the incrementing the control address register. The micro programs that employs the subroutine will require the external register for storing this return address. And the return address cannot be stored in a ROM because of the writing capability, because you can't write in a row. Okay, because it is read only memory. When the execution of the instruction is completed, the control must return to the fetch routine, and that next address is provided by this step 4. Okay, so in summary, we can say that uh, when the execution of the instruction is completed, the control must return to the fetch routine, and this is accomplished by executing an unconditional branch micro instruction to the first address of the fetch routine. So, in step 4, we are just uh, finding the next address for your sequence. We can summarize these 4 steps like this. In first step, we are incrementing the control address register. Second step, we are unconditional. We are doing the unconditional branch or conditional branch depending upon the status bits condition. Third step, we are mapping uh, the address or you can say mapping your instructions address in terms of your control memories address or in a mapping process from the bits of the instruction to the address of the control memory. And, and in fourth step, we are facilitate a for a subroutine or call and return. So by this four step, we can sequence the address. Next, we will see the selection of the address for your control memory. So, by this figure, this figure shows the block diagram of the control memory and the uh, associative hardware needed for selecting the next micro instruction. 
here uh, the micro instruction in the control memory contains the set of bits to initiate the micro operation in the computer register and the other bits to specify uh, the method by which the next address is obtained that is depends upon status. Uh, so, we can uh, say that the, uh, this diagram here we have uh, shown the four uh, different path for which the control address register can receive the address and that address can be from the uh, just from the mapping logic. Second thing this address can be from your address increment or you can say from the SBR register or it can be some another uh, address from the SBR or it can be direct increment from the SBR and fourth is this from this branching address ok. So, total four inputs are there for this uh, CAR control address register we can summarize it like to increment the uh, content of the control address register by one to select the next micro instruction in the sequence. Branching is achieved by specifying a branch address in one of the field of the micro instruction. The conditional branching is obtained by using the part of the micro instruction to select a specific status bit in order to determine its condition. So, uh, the, an external address is transferred into control memory via mapping logic circuit. So, by this four way your address of the control address register uh, can be changed. Uh, the return address for the subroutine is stored in the spatial register whose value is used when the microprogram wish to reach, uh, return from the subroutine and that is uh, stored in a SBR register. The branch logic of this figure provides the decision making capability in the control plane. The status conditions are special bit in the system that provides pro, uh, parameter information such as a carry out of the adder, the sign bit of the number and the mode bit in the instruction and the input or output status condition. The status bit together with the field in the micro instruction that specifies a branch address control and the conditional branch decision generated in the branch logic. Uh, here A1 output in the uh, multiplexer generates a control signal to the transfer the branch address from the mic one micro instruction into the control address register and A0 output the micro uh, and the A0 output in the multiplexer causes the address register to be incremented. So, by this way you can increment the content of the address register. Next we will see the mapping of the instruction. A special type of branch exists when the micro instruction specifies a branch to the first word in the control memory where the micro program routine for the instruction is located. The status bit for this type of branch are bits in the operation code part of the instruction. For example, a computer with a simple instruction format uh, as shown in a figure has a operation code of a 4 bit which can specify 16 distinct instruction. That means as 2 raised to 4 is equal to 16 that means you have total 16 instruction if your operation code is of 4 bit. Okay. So, uh, let me assume further that the, uh, the control memory is having 128 words requiring for the address uh, of 7 bit because 2 raised to 7 is equal to 128. So, your control memory is having a address of 7 bit while your operation code is of 4 bit. So, you have to map this 4 bit into 7 bit address of your control memory. That is why you can access your particular instruction in terms of micro instruction. Okay. Uh, one simple mapping process that converts this 4 bit operation code into 7 bit address for the control memory can be like this. You can map this 4 bit. Uh, for example, our instruction has operation code 1011 and we want to convert this into a 7 bit of uh, micro instruction address or you can say control, ad control memory's address. So, we will uh, make this 4 bits as it is and remaining 3 bits as a 0000. 0, 0, 0. 
Okay, so that means your instruction will have uh, the micro address or control address is a 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. And the micro operations required for this instruction, you can store this location onwards. Okay, and for this particular instruction, you have two LSB bits as a 0, 0. That's mean, that means after that 0, 0, that is 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. You can use for this particular instruction. And after that 1, 1, your uh, next bit will be like 0, 0, 0, kind of that. That means your three bits are going to be changed. So you can't use that location for this particular micro operation. That means you have total four locations to store the micro operations for this particular instruction. Okay. So by this way you can use. Uh, but instead of using this 0, 0, 0, you can use any location. Okay. But that will give you the starting location for your for this particular micro instruction. Uh, this mapping is consisting of the placing zeros in the most significant bit of the address field and transferring the uh, four operation code bits and the clearing the two list significant bits of the control address register. So by this way we can create or we can transfer this four bit address into the seven bit address. This is called as a mapping process. Uh, here, uh, one thing, uh, this provides for the each computer instructions a micro program routine with the capability of four micro instructions because in LSB we have, we are remaining with the two bits and two bits can specify the four location. If uh, the routine needs more than four uh, micro instruction, it can use the address 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 through 7 times 1. If it is uses the fewer than the four micro instruction, the unused memory location would be available for other routines also. Okay. Uh, once uh, one can extend this concept to more general mapping rule by using the ROM to specify the mapping function. The content of the mapping ROM give gives the bits for the control address resistor. In this way, the microprogram routine that executes the instruction can be placed in any desired location in the control memory. And the mapping concept provides the flexibility for adding the instruction for the control memory as and when need arises. Okay. So by this way, you can map your opcode or you can say operation code into your control memory where you have stored the micro instruction for this particular instruction. Okay. Uh, next we will see the hardware configuration for your computer. Uh, here this is the total configuration for your computer. Uh, some part you are already aware of that is your address register, program counter, your memory, then multiplexer, a data register, ALU part, accumulator part and so on. But here this, this part extra added is this control memory that contains your control location that is uh, having a total address space of 128 cross 20. Then it is having some SBR register and CAR register. That is your control address resistor where your instructions address is provided. Okay. And in SBR resistor, you are providing the next address for your instruction or next micro operations instruction. Okay. So uh, that that you already aware that you have multiplexer, address resistor, program counter, address resistor where, where you are storing your address of your uh, instruction. Program counter, you are storing the next location from where your instruction is going to be fetched. Uh, here, we are getting the address from the multiplexer. That means you are multiplexing some memory location, some program counter and this uh, accumulators contain to find out the actual address. And that address provided and according to that address, your data is accessed and that is stored inside the data resistor. Okay, and then some operation is going to be done inside the ALU and that is result is provided. Uh, here, the block diagram of the computer is shown over here and it is consisting of the two memory. First memory is the main memory for storing the instruction and the data. Uh, second memory is the control memory and that is for storing the micro program. That means you are going to store here the instructions micro program okay instructions micro operation you can say 
second thing, it is consisting of the six register. Uh, these are processor units registers, are accumulator, program counter, address register, and data register. Accumulator is for, for uh, your AV operation. Program counter is storing your next address. Address register is for storing your address of your program. And data register is for storing your data. Uh, next one is the control unit register that are the SBR that is uh, subroutine register and CAR that is control address register. Control address register stores your address of your micro instruction and SBR register stores your next, uh, next address. Okay. Uh, next to third part is the multiplexer. This transfer of the information among the register and the processor is done through the multiplexer rather than the common bus. Here we have not used the bus but we have used the multiplexer. And fourth part is the A. This arithmetic and logical instruct unit performs the micro operations with the data from the AC and DR that places the result into accumulator. The DR can receive information from AC, PC or the memory and the AR can receive the information from program counter or the data resistor and the program uh, counter can receive the information only from the AR resistor. Input data written into memory that can come from the DR and the data read from the memory can go through only DR resistor. So uh, by this way we can configure our hardware that is consisting of the two kind of memory that is your control memory and your main memory. So here we are ending our today's session. If you have any query then you can contact.